Okay, we're going to start with the nation as usual. Subsidy pain, Tinubu rolls out relief package. Um, diphtheria has killed 83, infected 836. CBN exempts MF, uh, MFBs, uh, I think that's microfinance banks, others from cash limit policy. It's time to deliver President tells service chiefs. Labor insists on protests despite ongoing talks with the government. Lagos slashes bus fares by 50% for families to get food packages. And the drama of ministerial screening day one. Okay, should I start with the... Which one to start? Or okay. the Lagos State Government? Um, so, yesterday at the um, a decorating ceremony of the Chief of Defence Staff and other service chiefs, uh, we had a Special Advisor on Special Duties and Communications who spoke on behalf of um, the President. Um, said that uh, the president said that the mil military must work together to deliver the nation from insecurity and other forms of um, criminality. He says so far some of the um, successes that we have gained so far is because of that um, um, collaboration that they have amongst themselves. He, uh, he lauded the dedication, commitment and steadfastness displayed by armed forces, acknowledging their contributions to peace and stability. Um, the president also assured the new service, uh, service chief that his administration remained committed to supporting them in their responsibility and asked the armed forces to see themselves as a single family regardless of their diversity. Um, as we know, um, these service chiefs were, when, when he picked them up, but they've been inaugurated. So we have Chief of Defense Staff at General Christopher Musa, Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja, Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar, and Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala. Okay, let me take the um, Lagos State Slashes bus fare. So, uh, in addition to the numbers of states that have actually um, unveiled policies for their citizens, Lagos, Yobe, and Bauchi have joined the list. Some of the measures is to provide, um, beef up the bus fleets for their citizens, reduction of the cost of transport fares, and distribution of relief materials. Governor Sonwulu has slashed the bus fares on the Lamata by 50%, and he has spoken with the transport unions to reduce theirs by 25%. The governor told reporters that, um, that the civil servants' bus fees will also be re increased, so they're going to increase the number of bus fees available for civil servants. Um, they said that they're all arrangements have also been made to provide food stuff to vulnerable persons. Um, so, I mean, this is from Lagos State, but there are other states who are also doing something. Let me see, Yobe State also. Um, he has directed the state committee on politics to mobilize and distribute relief materials to the poor residents to cushion the effect of the fuel subsidy removal. Uh, the governor um, also um, asked the committee to map out the holistic approach to identify areas that require immediate, intermediate, and long-term intervention. So, Various states have started coming up, many, many of which are putting issues. Um, the, the issue of transportation is key for many of them. And they're either increasing the bus, the bus fleet or reducing the transport fare, which is important for many workers, as we, as we discussed yesterday. What and are they going to do about all the downfalls? Because they are not under legal state. So the downfall, they are going to, they've spoken to them already and they've agreed to cut their own affairs by 25%. So all that will start from Wednesday. That's tomorrow. So hopefully um, okay. we should get that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the CBN, the CBN exempts microfinance banks and primary mortgage banks from the um, cash limit policy. So we remember the cash limit, the first cash limit policy was placed on the 6th of December last year that was limiting the um, individuals from being able to withdraw cash above 100,000 Naira and for companies above 500,000 Naira, which was adjusted January 9th of 2023 to 500,000 Naira and 5 million respectively for private and companies. Now, they said because the microfinance bank are serving the poor, I was wondering, they are serving the poor and economically active poor from paying the process fee for withdrawing above the limits. So that's the key. If they want to withdraw above 500,000 Naira, then they won't have to pay the processing fee that comes with it because they are microfinance banks and they are mortgage banks. Um, this is a good thing for those that have micro. Maybe I'll go and open a microfinance bank. So because hmm? really, no, I mean open a microfinance account. Okay. Yes, open a microfinance <laughs> okay. account because that way you can avoid, yeah. as a business owner, you want to avoid as many fees as you can avoid when you are trying to withdraw yeah. money. But it's a good policy. I encourage to business serve, at that level. Yes. So. Mm. 
Okay. So Labour has insisted that they're going to go on strike despite um, the ongoing talks with the federal government. The president, NLC president, who addressed reporters after the meeting with the presidential steering committee and said that there was a plan for a peaceful protest. They, but they've adjourned the meeting till, to, till today and um, they wanted to listen to the president's broadcast. Okay. So I figured that that, that that was probably what happened. But let's move on now to the punch. Subsidy pains. Labor insists on protests as Sinembu okays 500 billionaire palliative 3,000 buses. Is our hot topic today, so we'll discuss that a bit later because everybody's talking about the president's speech last night. Mm. Abductors collected 3,350,000 naira to release me, says Undo kidnap victim. Residents groan as medical workers desert collapse Ogun Health Center. Niger Junta arrests top politicians. Germany withdraws aid. Few price hike drivers threaten to dump Bolt and Uber. Gallant Falcons pockets 1 billion naira rich World Cup last 16. Senate screens 14, tackles nominees over age and tax. Tinubu decorates service chiefs, general, um, generals pledge loyalty. And external reserves shed $167 million as Naira slumps further. Okay, which story are we taking, Punch? I, I, I can go first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I wanted to take the um, girl that she was 23 years old, or she's 23 years old, who was abducted by kidnappers. She said they took 350000 from her. This is as the um, Amotekun, they have um, raided the forests and arrested, I think, 20 men suspected to be involved in kidnapping. They said they, they, they have just, uh, they are in, they engulfed the forest, so they just entered there and arrested all of them. And this girl said she was at the, on the farm with her sisters, and they saw these three men coming towards them. And uh, she said, ah, let's let them move. The sister said, no, they, they won't talk to us. They won't talk. But of course, they came to them, and they um, arrested her name. They kidnapped, kidnapped her. her and they started beating her with the stem of the cassava. She should go, um, she should walk. So they took her away and they said, um, Where's her phone? She said she didn't have a phone. Her father's phone number, she doesn't know. She, she has lost her memory mm -hmm. from the kidnap. So they, and eventually, she, when she saw that there was no going back, she gave them her own number. They called, 350,000 was paid. Oh my god, for me, farmer. But she got, yeah. Can you imagine? Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, so let me take the stories of the nominees, uh, the ministerial nominees. I, saw, I watched it yesterday. It was quite interesting. Uh, 14 out of the 28 have been screened, of, uh, although about three uh, probably will still have to do a bit more investigation because um, there were three nominees that were seriously drilled by the, uh, by the Senate. And they said that they have to go and do a few more um, findings to be sure before they can confirm them. Who that was the um, nominees of Dan Ladi, Usev, and Ohaneyi. These were three. They faced really by the lawmakers. Three out of them, they, um, they were confronted with issues bothering on alleged age fall, falsification, forgery, and perjury. If you recall, uh, Dan Ladi, Dan Ladi um, was, was taken up on an alleged court judgment banning him from holding public office for 10 years. Mm. Though the he denied the allegation that ne that never happened. Um, the Senate president ruled that the issue will be looked into at the stage of confirmation before he can be confirmed. But though the social media were clamoring that he should be disqualified because the Supreme Court had said that he should be barred from holding any public offices for the next 10 years. Shouldn't have been nominated in um, Well, so it's all about screening. And then screen Youssef, screen. I think it was the, um, the lawmaker, for, the senator from, from Lagos State, raised the issue of the age discrepancy. So he had, according to him, he had finished primary school, I at think at, at the age, no, he entered, nine, entered, nine, he entered nine. primary school at the age of three, according to him, and graduated at the age of nine. And he was like, that was a bit of a discrepancy. Give us an info, how, how, how is this possible? So what he should have done is to tell us categorically, <laughs> yes, I entered primary school at age three, and I have evidences to show for it, or maybe something, something to just like a letter from your school indicating that, because if you're going to the Senate, you should have something to show that indeed this thing. I know there are not many of us that are three years old entering primary school, but just in case an issue. Primary one at three. The, yeah, that, yeah, you has not the, finish. There's some people that are very smart. You can let's not judge, assume. So you now finish primary school at the age of nine. He said, Uncle, 
this these numbers are looking. Although his people is his country, people I mean, are finished at finish age his, of nine. Yeah, so his states is um, the other lawmakers from Benue State. He could have had double promotion. We're trying mm -hmm. to trying to explain that. Listen, this guy is a professor. He's a, he's already he has done well already. Let's not focus on the mm -hmm. issue. This is just small typographical error. Say, uncle, this is not a typographical error. Somebody to go and tell us what. But, uh, but either we, the, 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 the ones that the ones that really for me entering. that was a problem. What the ones that they were saying, take a bow, take a bow. And because they are already lawmakers, so what happened is that they they actually they said that in the sixth, fifth, or seventh assembly, so they already screened. have their records. They know who they are. They've been screened in the past. And so for someone like Wiki, yeah, Wiki okay. was not focused. Book 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 book, book slag. It was that one that is a uh, wife. He, he talked about Bukachua. his wife and the that was Bukachua. a Supreme Court justice. Yeah. Bukachua, yeah. Uh, Bukachua. If that one now comes, they will tell him to, to take a bow. No, no, no. So but what, what, how many of them? Are, all the ones that were saying off the mic, off the mic. They too will take a bow. No. Exactly. So with Wiki, for you know, example. So let us just say the truth. Let the truth be the truth. It's so not what, 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 me and, is what we are watching. We already so said it, and we didn't want to give up. Okay, the review. I have a have this. Well, <laughs> let's go back to the paper review. <laughs> so um, we have the um, drivers are threatening to dump Bolt and Uber. They call themselves an amalgamated union of app-based transport workers of Nigeria. And their grouse is that um, they've made repeated e efforts to these app-based firms to implement new fare, to implement, you know, new prices because of um, the fuel subsidy removal and, of course, we know the attendant um, increase in fuel prices. But they said that they, ha they are not getting the same responses from these um, firms and well we are nigerians we understand so they're saying that see this is not going to pay them anymore you know but um Pont says he was able to reach out to um bold and they said that they empathize with our with the drivers and also their riders they also understand um the economic challenges that we're facing right now but um that there's a way that they go about it to make sure that you know uh, they come up with a plan that serves both the driver and the rider um, I think it makes sense. I, I, I think it's sometimes um, unfair with these apps. It seems that they don't respond. This is the second time we've seen this. They don't respond immediately mm, to the economic, the economic changes policies, that happen yeah. in Nigeria and Africa. In the Oimbo countries, they do it quick, sharp. But here, you know, we almost have to have these drivers threatening to stop using their apps for them to step in. Okay. Please, I need to take this story. In punch. Important. Yes. Another story Very, in punch. Yes. I'm not taking a story in punch. <laughs> no, go ahead. You know, residents are groaning. Um, a community in the Odeda local government area of Ogun State on Monday is appealing to the government to help them rebuild their hospital. This hospital serves over 100 communities and the hospital collapsed. The hospital was built as a by a federal lawmaker as a constituency project in 2007 and the, the health workers have deserted the facility. Punch put a picture of what the facility looked like. That they don't, the community people are saying they don't have access to health care and about 100 communities are seeking, um, over 5,000 members are benefiting from that facility almost on a daily basis before it's collapsed. Mm. That they need, all the medical staff have left the place they don't want to risk their life because of the de uh, devastating yeah. situation and they're appealing to the government yeah. that the rain is falling. Please help That's us. That's a very good story to it take. It has no roof. That's a good story to take because this the lawmaker has no built roof. it back then. What happened? Somebody Somebody should should there's a local government chairman. There's maintenance. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Tinubu hints of fuel price intervention. Senate screens confirms WK, Momo, others as ministers. Diphtheria, 83 deaths recorded, says NPHCDA. FG raises security concerns over Second Niger Bridge. Court restraints Abia panel from probing ex-governor Ipe Azu and others. Protests not going back, says Labour. Anger swells in Oyo Oshun as protesters block government house and roads. And sister Tom, enough is enough, says Ohaneze. Ohaneze. Ohaneze, indeed. Uh, yeah, where <laughs> are we taking? Okay, so the federal government has urged security agencies to please intensify surveillance on the multi billion second Niger Bridge to prevent miscreants from vandalizing it. So there's just been stories that, you know, miscreants have been going there and trying to remove, like, the metallic components of the bridge. Hmm. Um, we had the permanent secretary of um, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, Mahmoud Amaman. He said that um, he went on an inspection. He said that they are afraid that this bridge will now become unmortarable if vandals continue to have their way, um, saying that these miscreants are after metallic, um, the metal components. Um, he's also saying that the 
you know, after asking that security surveillance activities should be intensified, but there's also the fact that um, communities, you know, around there also need, um, they play a role in protecting um, this um, infrastructure. It says federal government has played its part. Now local government and all these communities have to also play their part in making sure that they protect this infrastructure so that other people can use it. He says, as far as he's concerned, free movement is a human right. And what these vandals are doing is taking away the human rights of Nigerians to ply that bridge. OK, so let me talk about Onahane Zendigbo, the apex um, organization led by the president general, Chief Emmanuel Wanyawu, in a statement that has condemned the continuous status home by Mr. Simon Ekpat, the leader of the autopilot version of IPOV. I don't know what that means. Um, the Finnish-based EQAM had also had declared a two-week seat at home starting yesterday, July 31st. But the Hawaiian said such orders had subjected the people to serious fear, trepidation, and untold hardships. Uh, he invited EQAM to a roundtable, lamenting that their actions had frustrated efforts to woo investors into the region. Um, he said, unfortunately, several non-state actors have really attempted to unleash mayhem on the people. And um, he says that the, the, they've maimed, killed uh, people from the southeast in this region, and um, they've lost properties worth trillions, have been lost to these whole um, issues of um, sit at home, that many people are not able to go to work, they're able to feed. This out is noted for micro, small, and medium scale enterprise, indigenous manufacturing, fabrication. All this has been has put to a halt because of the sit at home. So he's, he's asking that federal government should um, exercise the highest degree of prudence in the discharge of their official duties to avoid further loss of innocent lives in Ebola and saying that we cannot continue with this state at home. I don't understand how Simon Ekwa is just able to achieve I, this. I, 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 even even Kano, you know, the Kano said yes. he's now appealing to Simon Ekwa to stop the state at home. Wow. Was so. it on our platform that you, you put the speech? Yes, yes, his, his, his video. Yes. I mean, I, I, I don't know how you can live abroad and then control people in Nigeria. If you want to come here, That's come and do it here. Come, come and join in the sitting you know? at home. So hey. you're not making money on the Mondays and you're seeing the impact of being yeah. stuck in the house on Mondays. Please, let me take the story of um, um, anger. People are angry, obviously. The, uh, um, in Oshun State, as well as in Oyo State, there was a protest by all the labor um, workers, including the NLC, trade union, and NUP. Uh, as well as Noj, that's local government workers, and they stopped the government from being able to exit his place. That was Agodi Ibado yesterday, it caused major traffic. It was their complaint. Mm. They want increase in their salary. They said there are a lot of deductions being made to their salary. They didn't say what the deductions were for, but they said there were deductions made that they wanted it to be paid. Then those that are retired are saying that they haven't gotten their gratuity yet and that they want a letter, the, they want, um, the letter of promotion for year 2021-2022 also should be addressed. Now, in reply, the Commissioner for Information and Orientation for the Oyo State highlighted the challenges the government is facing. Let me see, five, million, five billion is their internally generated revenue. No, no, five billion is their allocation. 2.8 internally generated revenue. The salaries of Oyo State alone is 7.3 billion. So if mm -hmm. their internal generated revenue is 2.8 and they are getting 5 billion from, they got 5 billion from FAC, the federal allocation account, it means they only had, they only have like, they have less than three, um, three about 3 billion to just carry out infrastructural activity. They said they, they ensured that they are paying the 30,000 minimum wage. They also promoted, um, recruit, increased 2,000, recruited 2,000 civil servants and they promoted 1,000, that they are doing their best with the resources that they have and that is a tough time, and the government is imploring the citizens of Oyo State to calm down. There 2,000 was... people earning 7 points, only billion. No, no, no. They added 2,000 oh, in, in, okay. in addition, but mm. We didn't think of all that one before salary. it was running up and down with Wiki. Okay, let's move on now to uh, Vanguard. <laughs> Tinubu attacks hardship with 500 billion Arab palliatives. Labor insists on nationwide mass protests from tomorrow. 110 suspects arrested as Fintiri relaxes curfew, visits um, looted warehouses. Senate holds screening of three ministerial nominees over alleged forgery, forgery and age falsification. Tension as ex-Emir Sanusi's portrait appears in Kano government house. 
um, subsidy removal, Tinubu orders federal institutions to stop arbitrary fees hike. Supreme Court, NBA, Obasekimba mourned as Justice Nwese dies at 64. Okay, so, uh, okay. go ahead. NLC is saying that they are, they are insisting on going ahead with their protest um, tomorrow. The NLC president, Mr. Joe Ajero, says that the plan for workers to proceed on a peaceful protest on Wednesday has not changed. <coughs> and also, you know, there are fears that... Um, the protest may be hijacked by hoodlums. He says that that has never happened in the history of workers' protests and also says it's the responsibility of security agencies to provide security for protests to protect, you know, the workers. Um, and then they said that they had waited to hear the president's speech before they made this particular mm. statement and that, you know, reacting to Tinubu's plan to intervene on exchange rates over inflation and high cost of gasoline. He says, he says that by the time you have a single market and you are not having anything that has comparative advantage, your energy is import driven, then how are you going to control it? How are you going to control somebody that exchanged a dollar at about 900 naira? Are you going to tell him to sell below the price? How are you going to tell even Nepal today with the cost of production not to increase tariff? Even corn sold at 18,000 naira in villages by February, now it's about 56,000. How are you going to control it? So they're saying in their own, what they're saying is that they do not think that what he has ruled out is really um, going to, the economic policies will, um, in any way, positively impact what we're facing mm -hmm. right now. That's inflation. Okay.